Revolutionary Talk for Revolutionary Times. Promoting peace, liberty, and prosperity around the clock. LibertyTalk.fm. Welcome to Living in the Solution with Dr. Elena George. Today we have a special show. I'm looking forward to this. I think for me as an ENT, the voice is extremely important and it's one of the main things that got me into ENT as my specialty. And today we're going to speak with somebody who has taken the voice and it's become a way of helping people help themselves. And I'm all about that. It's not about how many medications we can write. It's not about masking the problem. I think people should learn to be their own physician and listening to your inner voice and your external voice is something that I think people take for granted. So today we wanted to speak, or we are going to speak with Kathleen Nagy, known as the Sound Lady, offers a unique approach to holistic wellness through sound energy. With over 20 years of experience as a bioacoustic research associate, she specialized in voice energy analysis for sports or muscle injuries. As a classically trained musician with a background in music education and French horn from Ithaca College, and graduate work at Yale University in French horn and conducting, Kathleen combines science and intuition to provide sound-based harmonic healing. Her services at thesoundlady.com include personal chakra scale sessions, a guided meditation which vibrates your chakras with your voice to calm emotions, and how to take a sonic selfie to see how you use customized notes to balance your energy. Her journey from symphony orchestras to sound healing was propelled by her personal experience with the power of sound. Sound energy emerges as a non-invasive, side-effect-free alternative for those sensitive to pharmaceuticals. It also offers a self-healing approach through personalized frequencies gleaned from recordings of your own voice. And Ms. Nagy, first of all, I want to thank you so much for joining me because this is going to be a wonderful conversation. People need to get to know their bodies and they need to get to know, the, to know themselves. And I love the part about not using pharmaceuticals. I'm a physician, I write prescriptions, but it's not my my goal is not to have people on prescriptions forever. It's about fixing the problem. So I wanted to start the conversation at the beginning. How did you find this healing modality? How did you come to it? Well, um, I studied with Sherry Edwards uh, for years. Uh, actually, I was on her board of directors for a while. Uh, Sherry Edwards is the uh, inventor of bio human bioacoustics so the sounds that humans make and it's it was a process of recording someone's voice with a special microphone and looking at the frequencies in the voice to see which ones were out of balance with the main energy of the voice print so in the voice print graph that you would get you'd see some some points that that go up high on the graph and some points that are low on the graph and those frequencies correspond to notes that we call stressed notes. Uh, so we put those stressed notes into our database of frequency equivalents where um, basically we've got a, Sherry has created a, a map of the, a frequency map of the human body. Um, and it was very, very, I, I did it for uh, over 20 years, uh, but about 10 years into it, I was seeing some of the fallbacks. I mean, it was really good at uh, fixing physical issues. But when it came to um, holding that healing, um, if the issue didn't start as a physical issue and it started as an emotional issue or some unconscious thing that caused it, then you know we could play the frequencies for the physical issues and the physical issues would get better, but then they'd come back. And I thought, we really didn't get to the root of the problem. Um, so I wanted to find a, a technique that would work on emotional issues, and that led me towards the chakra system of the body, which, I mean, I, I use the chakras. It, it, it's not your grandfather's, you know, chakra sort of meditation stuff. Um, uh, if you go online and you, and you look for a, uh, a chakra scale, they all say a C major scale, and there's one note in there that isn't right. Um, and it won't work for everyone. And what I, I guess what really made me a believer in sound for healing the body was um, when I turned 40, which was over 30 years ago, uh, I 
had I got diagnosed with asthma, which was just baffling to me because I'm a French horn player and I have very, very strong lungs. And I don't know where this came from. And I, when I took those inhalers, you know, I got so jittery. I, I hated them. So um, I wanted to find a way to do it more organically. And my intuition just basically said to me, well, if you could hum a note that would really vibrate your lungs, you would have a chance of healing the asthma. I and mean, that just made sense to me. So I just started humming until I found a note that really made, you know, my lungs uh, vibrate. And I basically hummed that note for like 20 minutes a day for about a month. Well, I didn't just hum it. As a French horn player, I also added the French horn to it. So what I would do is um, play the note on the French horn and hum into the French horn at the same time. And it would create a big chord. And I would play that chord for 20 minutes a day. And I did that for about a month and the, my asthma went away and I didn't need my inhalers anymore. And that's what made me a believer in the power of sound. That's incredible, but not unexpected when you think about how the body is designed and how each cell is it's where energy, right? And each organ, because Tai Chi, I'm not Tai Chi, but Qigong also has energy as part of its healing modality, not sound, but it's still the same principle. Each yes. organ vibrates at a certain frequency. And when you're out of alignment, I would believe that causes disease. So if you can somehow get the, the, the organ, the target organ, to go back into its natural vibrational state, that would be healing. I mean, that makes perfect sense from the universe. When you think about how everything's aligned and how everything works. It's all about energy, isn't it? Yes, everything is energy. And we also think about sound and color and vibration. They're just different forms of energy, right? So they all, I assume, well, I, I looked at your website and it seems to me that you can attach colors, can't you, to the sound? I tried doing that initially, yes. But, um, well, I, I just, I preferred to just use the sound. Uh, uh, but yes, you absolutely can apply colors to sound because uh, in the in the color spectrum, which is like in the, in the trillions of uh, hertz frequencies, right? It's, it's up in the trillions and um, sight, sight is, in, is, our eyes are the organs that can interpret those colors at those frequencies. Um, sound is, uh, a much lower frequency um, than, but but if you divide, let's say the the spectrum of the color red, if you take the kind of the median frequency and the spectrum of the color red, and you just um, divide it by in half and half and half, all the way down out of the trillions into the thousands into the hundreds of hertz, then you have the frequency of the color. Mm -hmm. that could be actually played as a note or, or sung by the human voice. But, you know, what's your interpretation of words, right? They're also sound. And if they're positive or versus something that's negative or something defeating or uh, negative towards somebody, does that also align? I mean, that's, I would think that that's the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. You can cause disease by what you say. You know, it used to be the little rhyme about sticks and stones will can hurt you, but words, I forget how it goes, but words are not supposed to hurt you. Sticks but, and stones will break my bones, bones, but words will never hurt me. Correct. Now, it sounds to me that that's not true, is it? No. <laughs> <It's the opposite. laughs> no, our mothers were not always right. <laughs> well, if you know the work of Dr. Uh, I think it's Emoto uh, from Japan. He had he wrote the book uh, the uh, miracles of what's it called? Um, miracles in water. Mm -hmm. uh, what he did was he took a, um, uh, a camera and he froze water and he took pictures of the water crystals uh, and he did experiments like he he filled two glasses with water and on one water he would put a little piece of paper that said I love you. And on the other glass of water, he'd put a little piece of paper that said, I hate you. 
and then he would freeze the water and he'd look at the crystals and the crystals of the I love you water were just beautiful. And the ones with the I hate you water were malformed and grayish and ugly looking. So he, he proved that water had consciousness uh, with uh, just with just with a piece of paper saying it, but you could also he played music to a couple of glasses of water. He would play like something uh, harmonious and uh, with lots of symmetry, like Mozart, you know, to one glass of water, and he'd play some like hard metal rock and roll with you know I hate you in in the sound, and he then he would you know take freeze the water and take pictures of it, and this the the sound of I love you. What were these beautiful, you know, snowflake-like crystals? And the rock, hard rock and roll music was the ugly, malformed, you know, things that didn't even look like water crystals. When you think about this, the power of the voice to be either constructive or to be destructive, really, that's, it's exemplifies what you just said you know, what, what mm -hmm. he found. So we really have a lot more power, don't we, than we give ourselves oh, credit for. Really? Well, someone should have taught us this in the second grade. I mean, the voice is, it's, it's free, it's legal, you can access it, access it 24 hours a day. And it's the most powerful healing tool that we have. And we just were never taught that. Is affirmations, I know that we're going to talk about chakras and, and tone, I think, in the next segment. But if you do positive affirmations or prayer, is that something that is an analogous to saying I love you, you know, having that yes. power? Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And for example, even if, if you're chanting, and if you're chanting something in Hindu, and you don't really know exactly what it means, but it's the way your mouth forms the vowels uh and and the parts of the of your mouth get get vibrated with with the chant all of that is amplifying the intention uh the intention first and then intention carried on a sound is extremely powerful wow so it sounds to me if you think about where society stands right now you really shouldn't be listening to half the, no, probably none of the media, you know, the, the dialogue and the energy. It's so toxic and negative. I would think that that's causing a lot of people to be ill, you know, whether it's anxiety yes. or depression or anger, which are these, these are all emotions, I would think, that are counter to what we just described about being in balance and harmonic. Yes. And it's also the rhythm of their voices. I mean, I, I notice when I'm listening to, you know, one of the news shows, it, it's just rapid, da 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 really fast, really fast, really fast. The whole thing is going really fast. And I just have to turn it off and go, slow down. You know, sometimes it's not only the words that they're using, but it's the speed and the rhythm of what they're saying that just is kind of like you're being punched. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, a feeling of being off-putting, where it's just something not you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel settled. It's yes, it's anxiety. disruptive. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really. Let's stop at that point because I think people need to digest that. We really are in a position, in a pot almost, where people are just having at it, and even if you think it doesn't affect you, it will on a cellular level. It sounds like. So let's take our first break. You're living in the solution. Welcome back to Living the Solution. We're speaking with Miss Kathleen uh, Nagy, and she is the sound lady. If you go to her website, thesoundlady.com, you'll be able to see what she's written. She has a blog and learn more about uh, the services that she offers. Before the break, I think you did a wonderful job of breaking down the, the, the importance of being mindful about what you say and not only what you say to each other, right? But what you say to yourself, isn't that important? Absolutely. There are these unconscious, let's call them, you know, personas and, and these voices in our head, you know, one voice might be saying to you, you're no good. You're worth nothing. You're stupid. 
you'll never account, you know, you'll never become anything important. You know, those types of voices um, that we, we just kind of tend to, you know, push back and don't pay much attention to. But on a cellular level, they're running things because there's so much emotion attached to them. And um, learning ways to uh, find that persona and to give it a new job you know, thank it for what it was there protecting you, thinking it was protecting you from, but then give, kind of give it a new job, uh, and 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 harmonize the energy back into your in your body. Uh, are are ways to sort of deal with that uh, situation where we have we have these voices um, that sometimes we hear them and sometimes we don't. They're just completely unconscious. And how do you fix something that's completely unconscious? I mean, logically, you can't, <laughs> but sound can. Sound can fix it. Sound can change it. It can reharmonize it. It can release the energy and, and bring in more harmonious, symmetrical energy and, and let your body flow energy the way it's meant to. It sounds really awesome because it's something that's it's it's passive almost. You don't have to be you don't have to be active with it, right? I mean, people listen to music and it either puts them in a fabulous mood, they want to dance, or it makes them sad all sorts of things emotionally get driven by the music, but it's something that's, it just happens. You're not working on it. It just moves you. That's what it sounds like you're saying. Am I correct in interpreting it that way? Yeah. The, the language of the brain is frequency. All of the frequencies that the brain is um, interpreting all day long um, are either the you know, I, I feel like the brain does this type of triage um, all day long saying, okay, I have, I have this list of things that I need to do, but I only got so much sleep and I only had so much nutrition and I've been under this stress. You know, so the brain says, okay, we got to put this on the back burner because we don't have enough energy for that. Um, but with sound, if, the, if, if biochemically you don't have the energy to make a change in your body that needs to be made, you can make the change with sound, with the right frequencies, with the right notes, and the brain will respond and reset. So these frequencies, and I want to segue into chakra because you discussed that it's not your, your, your grandfather's chakras. <laughs> What's the difference in what, what – because we think about it as Eastern and – very cut and dry, very, uh, I don't know, state. Each chakra has a, something that it's, it's designed to interpret, you know, I guess, interpret or be, and there's no gray area. But is that really true? Well, when I started back in the 90s, you know, sort of meditating on my chakras, and I did all the things that all the, you know, people told me to do. And it was so frustrating because I don't, I don't see them. I don't, I, I couldn't feel them and I had no way of knowing if they really existed. Were they real? You know, and after a while I thought to myself, these chakras are a bunch of hooey. I mean, I, there's no way, no one can prove to me that they exist. But then there were so many people that I respected who believed in chakras that I was trying to find another way to connect with them besides imagining them, right? So that's when I started humming because I'm a musician and I play with sound. Uh, I've discovered so many things just playing with sound. So I just started humming and I found that when I hummed the lowest note that was comfortable for me to hum, that my root chakra vibrated. And then it was, holy mackerel, these things are real. <laughs> and I got so excited. <laughs> and, and, and then I figured out, you know, I just started humming up uh, slowly and finding the notes that vibrated all of my chakras, all the seven major chakras. And I figured out what the, what the scale was. And then I started doing it with other people. And I found that everyone had the same scale, but the, the starting note was different. Um, so a scale is, is a series of whole steps and half steps uh, within an octave. And the, this, People's scales were all, it was all a Lydian scale. It was, if you, you'll understand, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, right? Everybody knows that. And that's, yes. that's a major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. But uh, the scale that our body 
vibrates to is a Lydian scale, which is do, re, mi, fi, sol, la, ti, do. So it's fi instead of fa, it's just a half a step different. But if you sing fa, your heart chakra doesn't vibrate. If you sing fi, it does. So I figured out everybody's got this Lydian scale, and depending on the range of your voice, the, you you have a lower my my voice might be is lower than yours I can I can hear it you know from talking to you so my starting note is a lower note than your starting than your root chakra note will be, but but it will go up in the same progression of do re mi fi sol la ti dos. Um, I hope I haven't confused everyone. It's 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 the one, it's the same scale but it's different depending on where you start depending on who you are correct so it's in right, right. as well okay it's in, yes because the good lord made us so that we could use our voice to heal our bodies <laughs> and your voice isn't necessarily going to heal my body or you know a c and so it's not always a c major scale really if you look on online for chakra scales you'll see a c major scale you'll never see anything but a c major scale and that's going to work for the people whose root chakra is the note c which is one twelfth of the population <laughs> There are 12 different notes to the scale. (laughs) So I knew there were a lot of people other than me that were having trouble, you know, interacting with their chakras, seeing them, imagining them, feeling them. And I thought, well, if I taught everyone what their starting note was and how to get their chakra scaled, now everyone can start to have this a, a whole different relationship with these chakras because I call the chakras your like cellular emotional distribution system. I mean, these chakras take these emotional energy and uh, interact with them in, in those places of the body. And if there's some old energy that's in the, a certain area of your body near a, a certain you know chakra that's causing things to be out of harmony, basically, then there's going to be illness or disease in that part of your body. And by reharmonizing, with your voice, because your brain is listening to your voice all day long. I was talking about the triage. The frequencies of our voice are information for the brain about the health of the body. You can hear it in someone's voice when they have a cold. You can hear it in someone's voice when they're tired. Um, There's a lot of really subtle things you can hear, but the brain is listening all day long, taking cues from the sound of your voice as to the energy that you have and the energy that don't, that you don't have and what it can do and can't do with that. So that's something that's so for some people who well let me ask a different way if you're not in tuned or do you have to be in tuned with your body in order to be sensitive enough to understand this and use it? Well, not necessarily, though I find you know, of the hundreds of people that I've worked with, you know, there are thinkers and there are feelers. <laughs> Uh, the people who are feelers can get it a lot sooner than the people who are thinkers. And I, when I say to people, okay, let's hum a note, and and I want you to tell me where you feel that vibrating in your body. And some of them are just completely flummoxed by that. No one's ever asked them to do that before. Feel the sound of your voice in your body. But when you, when I sort of coach them into the place where they can do that, and they can, and then they all of a sudden feel their voice in their body, and it, all these light bulbs start to go off. It, it's a wonderful thing to watch. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. And once you've, well, is this a practice? That meditation is a practice. You're going to have to work that organ in order to be have facility with it. Is this the same thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's something I do every day. Uh, th- and I. There are ways to, um, I mean, w- once you have had a session with me and we figured out what your scale is, I send you MP3s of your chakra scale. And I use these fabulous chimes. I have these hand chimes. It's kind of like the new age version of um, of handbells. Have you ever saw handbell choirs in a church? The, it's a beautiful, dark, wonderful sound. And I have low, from low to high, I have like four octaves of these. And so what I did was I recorded all the possible chakra scales with these chimes. And when when we finish your session, I send you, you, you download these, these MP3s of your personal chakra scale that you can hum along with. And uh, there are some people that can't hum along with it because they just were never taught how to connect 
their voice and their body like that when they were young. Uh, and music is one of the seven intelligences. Uh, and when they're taking it out of school and not teaching music, we're really depriving uh, all of all of these children of a, a powerful way to understand your body and to work with your body and to help yourself. It's it's one of those things I remember when I was uh, in grade school having music class, and it was like a release, right? You just like you went somewhere for the half an hour, forty five minutes that you were there. It's about expressing yourself too, isn't it? I mean. One of the things that I think our society really tries to tamp down is someone being expressive of who they are, what makes them them. It's now, it seems it's, you're supposed to just hide that. Everybody needs to be the same. I can imagine how damaging really that is not to have, like sing your own song, so to speak, and be who you're supposed to be. I mean, it's, I can't imagine not being able to do that. Yeah, uh, it's very empowering. Uh, one one of the sessions that I would do is uh, with folks is mantra songs. So once we figured out th their chakra scale, and they tell me there's there's one chakra that they want to work on, or there's one issue that they want to work on, and we figure out what chakra it correlates to, and then we create. I I have them come up with an affirmation that you know makes them feel good about that sort of that part of their body or that issue. And then we, we create a little melody that is in the key of that chakra so that we're uh, using the words and then and, and the intention, you know, behind the words, but also the right frequencies to make the body just you know, come back into unity and to release that old piece of cellular memory that's no longer serving you. That's amazing. This seems so much more intuitive than it does for some people to sit and talk where they have to do a therapy session and they have to connect with their mind and body and try to really intellectualize this. This seems so much easier because you know, it makes you feel good, right? You can feel right. it. It's something that's just, it just is. Um, so let's take our second break. Cause I, this is just such a fascinating topic because it's so powerful and it's like we are living in black and white when we should be living in color. So let's take our second break. You're living in the solution. Welcome back to Living Solution. We're speaking with Miss Kathleen Nagy. And before the break, you were really you just opened my my mind to so many possibilities for healing. First, let's backtrack because I know what chakras are, you know, but for our listeners, what are the chakras and where are they in, technically in the energetic field? All right. So um, chakras are etheric energy centers and they're invisible to the human eye, but they connect to the major endocrine glands of our body. Uh, our root chakra is around the sacrum area. Uh, the next chakra up is the sacral chakra, and that's in the sexual area, ovaries and, and uh, gonads. Uh, and then you go up, the next one is the um, solar plexus chakra. That chakra connects to the uh, pancreas. And then there's the heart chakra which connects to the thymus gland, which has everything to do with our immune system. Then there's the throat chakra, which connects to the thyroid gland. Um, there's the third eye chakra, which is in, on your forehead, you know, kind of up above in between your eyes. And um, then there's the crown chakra at the top of your head. So those are the major energy centers. And then there are other secondary chakras, you know, th throughout the body, but those are the major seven chakras. Um, and basically, um, uh, like I'm working with, I'm, I'm like just found out that I'm sort of pre-diabetic. So I'm working with my solar plexus note and, and humming that and trying to rebalance my pancreas and give it the energy to make the right amount of insulin that it needs to make. Um, if people, um, your, your throat chakra, your thyroid, 
I also had had low thyroid all of my life, and I figured out the notes that, if, that I could hum that would energize my thyroid. And uh, for years, uh, even though I was low thyroid in all the blood tests, I wasn't on any medication because uh, I was able to do with sound and my voice and the right frequencies what the medication, uh, well, better than what the medication would have done. Exactly. <laughs> the medication just kind of throws more t- more thyroid stimulating hormone at, at the problem, thinking that you you know you're not using it. Basically, the problem is really your cellular receptors are clogged. It's so that, subtle, isn't it? Yeah. It's subtle yeah. and it's elegant because when we do things from a healthcare perspective, we're really just using these huge, I don't know if they're well thought out to tell you the truth. A lot of the times you don't think about, it seems in healthcare, we don't think about treating the problem. We just try to control the symptom or right. mask it or somehow it's just not, it's not working. And then you end up on another medicine to treat the side effect of the other one. And it's just taking people off their balance. And I don't think it allows them to have a internal view of what caused this. I mean, speaking of that, is there a connection between emotion and illness in the sense that if there's an organ system that's affected, let's say you've, you lost a child, for example, is there a connection with like a female disease, like a cancer of the ovaries of the uterus? Is there some sort of connection between not being balanced and leading to a disease in that organ? Certainly. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm not a doctor. You're a doctor. Um, any type of dissonance will cause disease. Makes sense. And once you're able to, technically, you should be able to go if you're if you go into this style of self help and helping your patient. You should be able to figure out then from the disease state which chakra is you need to work on. Is that yes. is that a one to one? Yeah, but the chakra system it's a system. So someone might come to me and say, "I really want to work on my on my heart chakra," and I, I at first I would do that. I would when I and then I learned that it's not just the heart chakra; <laughs> that it's a whole system that interacts. And there are certain, uh, like the, the root chakra is very connected to the throat chakra. And I found that out harmonically because I understood that the, the, the interval of uh, the note of the root chakra and the throat chakra is something called the perfect fifth. There, there's five, there are five notes apart. So one might be C, the, null not, the sh- root chakra might be C, and the throat chakra might be G. And I know how important that in music theory, that fifth note is to that root note. It, it really, it, it fills it out, it activates it, 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 it really supports that lower note. So I know that uh, there was a woman who was um, had a, was in a car accident and her leg was, was paralyzed and she was in a wheelchair and her leg was cold all the time. And when we worked with just the root chakra, we weren't able to fix the issue. But when we added the perfect fifth to that root chakra note, instead of one note, we used two notes, that perfect fifth note correlates to the emotional uh, layer of our auric field. And so we were balancing the emotions that were stuck in the root chakra. And she got feeling back in her leg. Wow. After being in a wheelchair for two years, the doctor told her she would never walk again. Well, the power of what you do is because I'm not a musician. I love music, but I don't understand music theory, et cetera. So when people work with you and you work with individuals and, and groups, am I correct? Yeah, I've, I've been in the pandemic. I had a lot more groups to work with. But once people went back to work, they didn't have time to do this anymore. And so I'm, I'm mostly working with individuals now, but I would I would love to get back to working with small small groups of people. Got you. And so you don't. When we work with you, we don't have to know what the fifth is or no. what note is. That's what no. you're, you you guide us through, correct? Right, right. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and it can be intimidating for people, especially when 
if, if you're a person who, when you were in school and you were in chorus and you couldn't match a pitch and the choral director said to you, just mouth the words, make believe you're singing, but believe don't sing. <laughs> and then they never sang again for the rest of their lives because they figured there was something wrong. And there was something wrong. There was a disconnect, but the chorus teacher didn't know how to help the person make the re reconnect it. And that I'm, that's an audiologist. You know, I mean, that really, it, there's a very important connection between the voice, the ear, and the brain. Mm -hmm. So um, in the womb, the ear is the first organ to completely form. And the brain is growing off the ear. So there is this incredible connection between the voice, the brain, and the ear. And when one of those pieces isn't working, uh, you have trouble hearing a, a sound and matching it with your voice. But you can't make a sound that you can't hear. That's true. I can imagine that. Yeah. And quick question on the vibration. For those who can't hear, for example, who are deaf, with to like touching them like a tuning fork or something where they can feel the vibration through the skin or yes, mastoid and the ear, would that also accomplish the same thing? Yeah. If they just put their hand on the speaker, for example, where the sound was, that's coming out of, mm -hmm. they, they can get the sound in. All of our meridians and on our fingertips uh, to, all, to all the energy systems of the body. So if you touch the sound with your fingertips, the sound will go into all the meridians of the body through the fingertips. And if you can't hum it and you're not actually producing it, it still is medicinal, it sounds like, because of the yes. actual stimulation of the meridian through the vibration. Yes. Yes. That's good to know. Yeah. So passively lying on your bed and humming, for example, that vibration, you can feel it in your chest. You can feel it wherever, if you really concentrate, that's the same thing then, isn't it? Yes. You can be anywhere and do it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, if if it's you know three in the morning and I'm up for whatever reason and I can't get back to sleep, I will hum my the note of my uh, third eye chakra because the third eye chakra is connected to the pineal gland, which regulates um, the circadian rhythms of you know light and dark, sleep and awakeness, and melatonin too, right? Right, and it makes melatonin. So if I'm humming that note telling my pineal gland to make more melatonin in 20 minutes or so I can fall asleep. Gee, that's much better than taking a medication, isn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, I know most, expect. most people will, will take a pill and I don't, the, that's the last thing I want to do. I want to find a sound that I can use first because I play with sound. I mean, this is so freeing because you don't have to have a prescription. You don't have to spend money. You don't have to worry about a side effect. There's all these things that you don't 